Hello everyone. Welcome to another video of Maida short video series. In this video, we are going to talk about splice girder bridge. So in Maida civil, we have the option of using pre-stress composite bridge wizard to generate any PSC bridge. So if we choose this tab by going under the structure and using this wizard, you see we have the option of using the girder type that can be either precast girder type or it can also be a splice girder type. So our major focus in today's video is to deal how do we define the splice girder type here. So as you can see as of now I am having some material and section already defined in my model and I will just quickly open this wizard file where I am having all the inputs for this splice girder bridge. So if I talk about the wizard based modeling so wizard is nothing but it is a place where we define all these different inputs at a single go. So if I divide this in the different forms like you can see we are having layout section tendon load and construction stage so we will give inputs to all the tab and once we click on ok the program generates the model for us so if I choose it as a splice girder type the difference that I have will be like there will be some temporary supports at the location of splice parts so for that like start with this like we first give the span information I'm having two span of 30 meter each then in case you are having any skew or radius you can also provide that so wizard is not limited to any straight bridge you can also use it for any complex geometry like that then from here I can choose the modeling type whether I want to model beam elements for my model or we can also use plate elements for deck in this manner so I choose all frame modeling that will be a grillage based modeling then I give the deck width from here we give the definition of the substructure you can model all the pier and the pier cap as well just by giving the inputs from here I will be choosing the properties and the material for my substructure the section length for that and accordingly once the substructure is defined we move towards the next tab from under the section we will give the layout of the bridge like from the center of the bridge where are the different girders located so we will give the offset and the sign convention is on left side it is negative while on right side it is positive from the center of the bridge so we give the different material for our components and the diaphragm location and the girder. Then the major parts come the tendon definition. So here we need to focus on like in when dealing with splice girder bridge if I talk about the construction sequencing. So this will give you a clear idea how the splice girder construction is done. First the substructure is erected then we erect the precast segments and you can see the gap between them so once these are erected we can have the splices like we can cast these splices and make it as continuous and after that we can perform the first stage of post tensioning so for all the components suppose I want to perform the post tensioning this can only be done once my casting is done for the splice and this is made as a continuous girder once this is done like we can cast the deck and a second stage of post tensioning can be done that is in after the casting of the deck and then we remove this temporary supports at the splice location so you can see the form work demonstration which will act as a temporary support for the splice location so that is how the process of splice construction is done in case we are having pre-tension elements for these precast segments so that will the pre-tensioning will be done only like at this stage for CS2 where the precast segments are casted while afterwards we will have this post tensioning so to divide this first we need to give the tendon profile and before that we will also define the tendon property so for that I go here and I can define any tendon property first like I'll define it for post tension as per the code all the relaxation losses will also be considered I click on apply then I will choose a pre-tension So now suppose for all elements I will be giving the property of post tension like this. So to define any profile we can use this help of the guideline where you can just choose the type of profile you are having and accordingly you will be giving the offset distances. So H1 is the distance from the face of the top girder like this at the start location then S2 is the location from the central span so in this manner you can just define as of now I am choosing straight so it will be just 
a straight portion where we just need to define this h1 distance so in this manner i have given three tendons as of now which are post tension and i just modify it then for segment 1 2 and 3 i am defining pre tension tendons and the only tendon present is a single layer and we also have the option to choose the debonding length from where the debonding is happening once this is done so basically we have defined all the tendon profile now when we go to the construction stage we will be giving the different post tensioning tendons so i go on here and here i can select like what tendons are post tension at which stage like whether those are first tendons that are is like that is they are getting post tensioning before the casting of the deck and in second tendons the post tensioning will be done after the casting of the deck that you can see here this is post tensioning one while this is post tensioning two so as of now we are doing post tensioning one only for this and all the girder pre-stressing is done beforehand like before the casting of the slice so you can see here g1 g2 g3 pre-stress and pre-tension girder are done then the girder is made continuous by using the casting of the splice and afterward the post tensioning is done so this is the tab where we give the superimposed loads and all the static loads that is quite similar to other conventional wizards so i am not going in detail with that the only focus here is the definition of the tendons for pre-tensioning and also for the post tensioning so once this is done like i can click on ok and this will generate the model for me so you can see like even a skew and curve bridge can be modeled using the wizard and splice creation can also be done so if you go through the stages and i'll just open the boundary condition so you can see like first the substructure is activated then next the first segment of my girder is activated and also the pre-stressing load corresponding to that has been activated then the second segment and the pre-stressing is done for that as well the pre-tensioning then the third segment then under stage 3 the casting of the splice is done so you will see the beam and releases beforehand like you see here I am having beam and releases to have the moment release at this location where splice has to be casted and once it has gained like it has been casted so the beam and releases has been removed indicating that now we are having a continuous girder then under the next stage you go you will see the temporary supports let's take the construction stage 4 so here the pre, the post tensioning is done for all the tendons that is how like you can see now the tendon profile are 30 and similarly the pre-stressing load are 30 then when you need to check the stage 5 so the superimposed loads I would say the wet concrete load is applied in this stage and then in next stage the casting of the deck has taken into picture then under stage 6 the false work the form work supports has been removed so the temporary supports that you are having beforehand at the splice location which are these are removed in stage 6 then stage 7 will have the superimposed loads of the crash barrier and the and the wearing surface and the stage 8 will be the long term duration days so that is how like you can consider any splice girder for pre-stress bridge in my dust server i hope this video was helpful for you see you in the next